Tell us about this partnership and the kind of timelines you're looking at to start human clinical trials. Thank you. We are uh, very pleased that we can extend our great partnership with BioNTech under these difficult times to rapidly, as a team, move forward to um, develop a COVID-19 RNA vaccine. And the timeline is very aggressive. We hope within weeks start dosing patients in U.S., Germany, and China. Wow, that is very fast. And, of course, we know that Moderna, which is working with the NIH, is using a similar messenger RNA technology. The first patient was dosed yesterday. I also understand that they are kind of concurrently running animal tests as they start that. It's not the usual step-by-step -step process. Uh, is that what you guys are doing as well, to be able to have that expedited timeline? Yeah, we actually, um, you know, we have been a partner of BioNTech since two years ago, trying to disrupt the way you do flu vaccines to get them better, faster, and more precise. So we started dialogues a few months ago as we got to know more about uh, COVID-19 genetic code and its behavior on how we could possibly um, join up here. And BioNTech already then had done some activities uh, that made it possible for us to plan these aggressive timelines. And we will certainly do things in parallel, but we are, you know, just weeks away from starting dosing. And I think what's unique here is that you bring together one of the proven vaccines leaders of the world, Pfizer, that has capability to scale up to treat hundreds of millions across the globe, and BioNTech, um, which is one of the leaders in the RNA space. So I think that supplements nicely what NIH and Moderna are doing and gives hopefully patients and um, all American people more options and more probability that we will come out successful. And quickly, give us a timeline uh, for the potential vaccine being ready if all goes well. And also, I know you're screening antiviral compounds too. Which one could potentially be ready faster? Yeah, thank you for um, a great question there. I, I think they serve different needs. The vaccine is really to deal with that in the end we need to get this type of coronavirus um, out of our public health population. So this is to treat the many, um, many, many millions of individuals that are initially are at risk or can be exposed to the, uh, to the virus in a population and protect us from coronavirus coming back too short or not disappearing in, in uh, our country. So while the studies may start in weeks, I, I think um, our strategy involves in parallel show that the virus is, the vaccine is uh, raising effective immune responses in patients and that we have good tolerability and supplement that with a possible animal data on effic efficacy. And we would like to be very creative in dialogue with regulatory agency, how we can bridge experiences from preclinical and, and clinical to possibly be able to provide a vaccine for the larger population in an unprecedented fast timeline. Because these are, un un unfortunately, an unprecedented time. And I want just to say, look, our CEO Albert Boalai very recently laid out a five-point plan, how we need to come together between pharmaceutical, biotech, and federal agencies to make a difference. And that has really propelled us uh, in, in this endeavor. And a lot of other labs have joined us, many coming from the network of NH. So we are moving very fast here. Finally, on the antiviral, I just wanted to say we're speaking about a few months there, but that's focused on treating patients that are ill. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, Dr. Dolston. We're going to have to leave it there. We'd love to stay in touch with you as these uh, developments come historically quickly in some cases. Thank you so much for being with us.